Hey everyone, it's me Hikiko, and unfortunately, the rumors were true. Sony is shuttering the PlayStation 3, PSP, and PlayStation Vita. Um, this is something that I have been warning about for the better part of a couple of years. I've had my doubts in Sony's preservation of its legacy titles, and it extends far beyond just the PlayStation stores closing. Uh, I would say ever since new management took over, Jim Ryan, they have shifted their focus away from backwards compatibility, which was a great concern to me. It's one of the primary reasons that I got an Xbox Series X and not a PS5. I have infused all the games on the Series X. You've blessed me with all the games? Yes, there's a lot of information here to unpack. There are some warnings. So if anything else, I will leave chapters here so you can choose which problem you want to know about and what my response is to that. I have uncovered one of the biggest DRM bugs within the PlayStation 3, and it also extends to the PlayStation 4, and we do not know if this also exists on the PlayStation 5. So, what this video is going to do is go from the very beginning of this rumor of the store closures, what that meant, and what you can do to back up your games. And I'm not going to cause any sort of panic. The last thing I want to do with this video is go out there and tell everyone to rush out there and buy digital games and physical games. This is a bull market, my friends. Anyone following the stocks out there, this is where the fools rush in. The time to be buying these games was probably 10 years ago, because now they're unfortunately at their most inflated price and people are going to rush you out there under the guise of the fear of missing out to make you overpay for games. Do not do that. Watch this video and let's get into it. So back when this whole thing got started, it all began with The Gamer, a little known video game outlet that claimed to have an insider source at Sony that tipped them off saying that the PS3, PSP, and PS Vita stores, the digital front, was closing this summer. And many people spent a lot of time trying to debunk this, whilst ignoring the very real problem that this situation was inevitable regardless, and there was a very concerning DRM problem that no one had mentioned except for Does It Play? Does It Play? Their Twitter account, go follow it. They've been warning people about this for years. So that's where I come in. I decided to go investigate this problem on my own and look at my very own PlayStation 3 to see if this DRM issue existed for me. So what I did is I fired up my PlayStation 3 with a dead CMOS battery and tried to launch my digital content whilst not connected to PSN. This was to simulate a time where PSN does not contact my PS3 to see if I was still able to access my digital content. There's a lot of misconceptions about the CMOS battery issue and I'm gonna try and break them down as simply as possible. Okay, so let me break down the whole CMOS issue. The CMOS, also known as the PRAM, is an area of memory where time is stored as well as stuff like your PlayStation themes. Hey gang, this is Future Miles. I just wanted to clarify this point even further. Your themes aren't necessarily stored in the CMOS, but your theme settings are. A telltale sign that you have a dead CMOS battery is when you power on your PS3 and notice that it reverted back to the default theme instead of remembering your custom one. A healthy CMOS battery will remember your theme every time you power on. So long as you have a working CMOS battery, your PlayStation 3 can keep the correct internal time. Every single one of your PS3 titles that you've downloaded has an internal timer and it has a valid license, which is signed based around the time that you downloaded the game. If for whatever reason, your 
PS3 checks the internal time and it doesn't match that or it goes out of sync with the time based around your licenses, it then needs to go to the PlayStation Network to ask for the valid time. So as long as you have internet and the PlayStation Network is active for your PS3, then it can set the correct time. Now, here's where the problem comes in. Let's say Sony discontinues the PlayStation Network on the PlayStation 3. This hasn't happened yet, but one day it will. For some reason, your PlayStation 3 loses track of the internal time, either from a dead PRAM battery or a glitch. Your PS3 could try to call the PlayStation Network, but it would fail. In this scenario, you would be locked out of your digital games forever. This is known as error code 8001 aka AKA the C-bomb. This DRM only punishes the people who chose not to hack their PS3s. Your purchase titles are all in Sony's hands. You are giving Sony good faith on whether or not in the future you will be able to play your digital titles. This problem is magnified even further for the PlayStation 4. Current experiments have found out that not only are you locked out of your PlayStation 4's digital titles if you have the wrong internal time, but it prevents you from booting physical discs. Let me be clear here. Every model of PlayStation 3 can play PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 3 games, regardless of the CMOS and DRM issue, okay? So you don't have to worry about it if you choose to buy these physical games. There are some models of PlayStation 3s, jump cut. There are some models of PlayStation 3s like the CECHA01, AKA the launch model, fat PlayStation 3 that can play PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 games natively. You can tell uh, that this is a launch model because it has the reflective face on it right there, right there. And it also has uh, four USB ports. So if you see one with four USB ports, chances are that's a backwards compatible one. It also has this flap here for the SD cards that you can put in there. Uh, a lot of these features and hardware revisions were removed. Uh, the biggest problem with these models is they encounter something called the yellow light of death, which is very common in the old fat models. Mine here has that issue. So unfortunately this doesn't work. But if you find a working one, they're as good as gold. That's probably the best way to make sure that you have as many of your old games playable under one uh, Sony system. <laughs> but once again, buy at your own risk. First thing is, you can go on your PlayStation 3's cross-media bar, go over to the account settings, scroll down to download list, and you can go through their long and disorganized, not alphabetical, download list, and one by one, download, I think, 50 at a time pieces of content really, really slowly. This is going to be a long and miserable process but if you want to back up your content that's the official way to do it but hikiko did you know there's custom firmware and i have access to all my digital titles even the ones i haven't paid for congratulations you now have the features that sony took away from you this is what I like to call the Sony time principle. As time moves forward into the future, all the features that Sony once promised are going to be taken away from me one by one by one. That's what happens when you allow Sony to have the keys to your content. At any point in time, they can just snatch it away from you. Oh, you like that PS2 emulation? You like being able to play PlayStation 1 games? Yoink, yoink, unless you choose to hack it. Sony is making the case for piracy instead of providing better service to the customer. That's sad. That's really sad. 
I choose not to hack unless there's no other choice. I choose not to go for custom firmware if there is a legitimate means for me to support the companies and the games I care about. I'm all for buying the games that you wanna see in the future. So don't get me wrong, but given no other option, sadly, piracy wins in the end. There's been a lot of I told you so's out there and victim blaming for everyone who chose to support a game in a digital format, okay? I am not a part of that camp because I can't necessarily blame somebody who bought a digital game if that was the cheaper option for them. There are some areas in the world where physical games are really freaking expensive. And all of a sudden, an enticing PlayStation Plus sale comes along and the game may be half off. That's a good reason to buy a game. Or how about you're an American gamer who enjoys the Siren series? I'm one of those guys. Well, for me, Siren, the Blood Curse, did not come out on a disc in North America. This was my option if I wanted to purchase the game in America without paying import and shipping fees. So are you gonna hate on me because I chose to support a game that I liked given no other option? There are many cases just like this where digital was the only option presented to us. So instead of blaming the victim, why not turn your focus on Sony? They're the ones who are making all this go away. This will happen again. It is happening again. They are pushing more now than ever towards a digital only future. They're selling consoles that are digital only. Now is the time, yes, to be buying physical when possible. But at the same time, do not blame the people who went out there and did something that was completely legal and ethical and maybe the best option for them at that given time. So you might be wondering, well, Hikiko, if you knew about the CMOS issue that's going to affect millions of PlayStation 3 owners, well, why didn't you tell Sony about this? Well, I tried. I went through every official channel that I could find to try and contact Sony about this before the announcement of the closure of the PlayStation 3 store. I went to their official at Ask PlayStation Twitter account, where they spend 12 hours a day answering the most banal, basic questions about PlayStation 5s, PS4s, PlayStation account issues all day. Not only did I provide my questions in a very nice manner, but I provided video evidence. It got retweeted by bigger accounts than my own. And it's had thousands of views. It's been published in worldwide news outlets. It's been featured in million, two million sub channels at this point. Now, this is a system with a dead PRAM or CMOS battery. They changed the date on it. And when they try to launch a game, all right, just watch real quick. They're trying to launch whatever, P it could be a PS1 game like Parasite Eve. Bam, error right there, okay, done. You have to set it via the internet. I can safely assume that Sony is aware of my video clip at this point. I tried DMing them as well. There's nothing else I can do but hope that Sony acknowledges this problem and then releases some sort of end of life plan. What's an end of life plan? It's going to be some sort of broad announcement or little announcement, like even a patch note that says, uh, within the final firmware update of the PS3, we will remove the CMOS time check, okay? If that happens, they will have saved millions of PlayStation 3s from being locked out of their digital content in the future. Now this begs the question, can Sony be sued for this? I get a lot of people saying, oh, there's a class action lawsuit coming. Uh, in the past, that has happened. Sony has been sued for the removal of other OS from the PlayStation 3 in the past. But 
do we have legal grounds to stand on as consumers? Uh, the straight answer for me is I'm not a lawyer. I really don't know what the grounds are for us to sue them based on their end user license agreement. This was sent to me. This is Sony's end user license agreement in terms of digital content. When you buy a digital game, here are your rights according to Sony. As I said, this is my own interpretation of the facts. I'm gonna read it for you and I'll give you my opinion after we're done. This software product license agreement applies to your use of all software products, software on authorized PlayStation systems. This includes your use of PlayStation Now, which allows you to access software via devices such as PCs and smart TVs. By purchasing, downloading, or using the software, you agree to the terms of this agreement. If you do not agree to the terms of this agreement, do not purchase, download, or use the software. Please read this entire agreement, which governs your use of the software. Section 1. Grant of License The software is licensed to you, not sold. SIE LLC grants to you a limited, non-exclusive license to use PlayStation software for personal use on your PlayStation system. Section 2. Updates and Online Server Support this agreement will apply to all software updates, including all downloadable content for the software. SIE LLC may, by automatic update or otherwise, modify the software at any time for any reason. If the software uses online servers, SIE LLC makes no commitment to continue to make those servers available and may terminate online features at any time. Section 4 warranty slash disclaimer slash liability limitations except as provided herein the software and all related services are provided as is and to the maximum extent allowable under law sie llc disclaims all warranties of any kind whether express or implied including but not limited to any warranties of merchantability fitness for a particular purpose and non-infringement Without limiting the foregoing, SIE LLC does not warrant that operation of software will be uninterrupted or error-free, that the software will be compatible with any other product, or that the software will work properly on all devices. SIE LLC may, at its sole discretion, discontinue supporting the software at any time and SIE LLC has no liability for such discontinuance. All right, now from a glance from the uneducated in law mind, this seems to me that Sony says, for whatever reason, if we choose to revoke your access to this digital content, they have every legal right, according to the EULA, to do that. I would love it if any lawyers on this subject, any of you YouTube lawyers out there would enlighten me on this matter, either in the comments or if you wanna reach out to me, I'm easy to contact, just leave a comment down below, reach out to me on Twitter. I would love to know if I buy something from Sony's digital stores and they choose to remove it or block access from me being able to launch it if they are legally in the right to do so. I'm really ignorant on the subject, please educate me. Thank you. All right, before I close out this video, I wanna give a major shout out to all the news outlets and YouTubers like Some Ordinary Gamers that gave me a shout out. Uh, Hikori YT actually posted this video that you can watch right now. That's me. <laughs> and really all the new subscribers and commenters that have shown up and shown support for this channel and this little project that I've been a part of. I could have never anticipated all my videos on this subject blowing up and maybe I might cover it again on down the road as this story develops, but thank you. This is, this is it. I'm, I'm pretty much done with this topic. The desired outcome here was for Sony to do something cool. They can still patch out this firmware issue. It could still happen. They could still do something cool and extend the PlayStation Store after Outcry. We don't know. At the end of the day, the ball is in their court. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, commenting, reacting. I'm Hakiko, and I'll see you all next time.
I don't know. I don't know what this future is going to look like, but it ain't looking good. Sucks to be a gamer in 2021. Bye.